Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build Erebor. Now we're not building Erebor quite just yet, we're still in the town and surrounding villages and aesthetic and decoration. And last episode you'll remember that we visited the rich residential zone and we put down the foundations, some roads, some walkways and we dug down a deep pit. And we set a theme that we're going to stick with when we built that area because what you can see is a lot of variation in the height of the town. When you look back at the kingdom build that we did, it was pretty much all on flat ground. There was a little bit of sunken area and a little bit of raised area. But the truth is the majority of the build was on flat ground. And that's something we want to try and avoid. We've got the added bonus that the area is on a kind of naturally hilly area here. It's on a flat plane of grass for us to work with. But we need to work on that and build with that to make raised areas and lower areas. And so we'll start with that by coming over to the government district, putting down some lightstone brick on the raised edge of this hill. Now unfortunately, because this is a hill, it's got slopes. And walls, well, they don't really slope much. So what we're doing now is we're clearing away the dirt and the stone from around the side of the hill. And once we've done that, we're putting in the sandstone behind the first layer of stone brick to repeat the effect that you saw in the previous video on the walls of the rich, the rich district. Now it would be so easy to just build this as a square because Minecraft is a game of cubes and obviously it favours straight lines. But I went for the difficult, uh, the difficult option of putting in a jagged wall here you see. And while that makes things harder it also makes things potentially much better. Because variation really is an important part of any build. And if you can throw in circles and jagged lines, and if you can go against the pattern, if you can go against the norm, if you can defeat convention, you can add a lot of creativity and originality to your builds. So here you see me putting down the lightstone brick on the lower lip of the wall, and then chipping away at the stone and the dirt behind that stone brick with world edit. I then came around the sides and replaced that stone and the dirt with sandstone. And then put in the design that we used on the previous areas of sandstone steps and etched sandstone. Now the etched sandstone with the steps wouldn't work in the jagged section so I just used etched sandstone. But I kept etched sandstone and steps on the flat areas, on the, on the straight line zones of the wall. Now I know this white wall is really ugly, but it's only a placeholder. This is just a, a loose kind of bridge to show us where we're going to actually build our bridge once we're ready to come at that. And as I finish the jagged area around the other side of the hill, It was time to look at the road section. And as I finished the jagged area around the side of the hill, it was time to look at the roads and edges of the government district. So I came around the back here with lightstone brick, putting in a three thick road, three block thick road, and cutting away the grass that was left between the sides of the road. Now for the road sections, as you can see down here in the bottom, at the Ridge District, we're going to be using cobblestone half blocks. And I think that's really a good idea because when you put in half blocks on the sections of road that you're going to walk on, it gives you a kind of natural pavement at the sides. And of course, adding any kind of depth helps make your builds look original, a little bit more funky, and all round better. So there I am just filling in with cobblestone, the road, and there we go. You can see the sides of the walls of the government district, the jagged area close to the river. Now we're going to develop the land near to the riverbank because it's looking really messy at the moment with some kind of river walkways, but we'll come to that later. And there you can see the finished kind of government district area with the foundation set. Now I wanted to bridge the government district with the rich district, so I came across here with lightstone brick and connected this to the road that we have going down 
to the rich district, but then I also kind of teed off, I came off with a T section towards what we've designated as the trade district. Now this might seem slightly controversial, but what I wanted to do with the trade district is have a large raised platform. Now this platform is gonna be half held up by pillars and half held up by actual buildings. But I mapped this out loosely with this kind of floating disembodied stone brick. And don't worry, it looks a bit messy at the moment, but once it's finished, it will look quite sturdy and quite sensible. Now I cut away at areas of grass because I had some ideas, but that's nothing that I would stick with. And then I came around with some road section on this raised section here, and you can see this is gonna be the road that's gonna loop around the raised section and the buildings will be in the middle bit. Now I came back to this bridge that we had bridging over from the government district, and I wanted to copy the pillars, the sandstone and stone brick pillars we had in the rich district over here for this walkway bridge. So using the copy and paste tool, I copied the top parts of the pillars and once those were in place and once I was happy with their position it was time to go back and copy the bottom half of the pillars and once I was happy with the locations of the top parts of the pillars I went back copied the bottom parts and pasted those in directly underneath the pillars over here and there we are, kind of stumpy pillars in a similar design to the ones we have over on the rich district. I then used etched sandstone and sandstone steps to continue that kind of pattern and theme that we've got going on throughout the whole build. And there you go, you can see the raised bridge and the raised walkways. It's already looking pretty cool, pretty swish. But we're not done yet, we're far from done. I began to cut away at the dirt and the stone that was underneath the trade district. Because I wanted this platform to be raised a bit higher, and I also wanted the area underneath this platform to be a kind of underground kind of market zone. This is where you'd go to kind of find the black market of Dale, if there's even such a thing. But if you wanted to kind of, you know, find like kind of poison or unscrupulous little things from the market, you go underneath this platform and there'd be all kinds of dodgy shops. I also wanted to hook it up to an underground tunnel system, but not just a small kind of tunnel system. I know you're thinking kind of, oh, well, tunnels, that's kind of small kind of three by three underground walkways, right? Well, no, I want massive tunnels underneath Dale. I want kind of like six by six, seven by seven, huge underground sprawling tunnels, which are going to be big enough to house shops themselves. They're more like caverns, underground caverns. So I came over to this T section, the bridge that reaches out to the trade district raised platform. And I couldn't copy and paste the pillars here because these are going the other way. So I had to make my own pillars here. But once I'd done one, I copied that and pasted it twice more to get that kind of raised pillar effect holding up the platform. I then filled in the insides of these road sections with the cobblestone half blocks and then came over to the corner of the platform that would be holding up some of the buildings on the trade district. Now I had to redesign the pillar because on a corner section, because the corner section is slightly different. So I designed this from the ground up using stone brick steps, sandstone blocks and steps. And once I was happy with what I'd achieved here, copy and pasted it on two more corners. Now I know you're looking at the platform and you're thinking, well, hang on a sec. Half of this platform is kept up by pillars, but the other half is kind of floating nebulously in the air, how's it going to hold itself up? If this is a real, if this is a real life town, Stin, that would fall over, that would crack, everything would fall to the ground, and there'll be death, there'll be carnage. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold up the other areas of the platform with buildings and shops. So then I came over to this section near the corner of, of underneath the platform, and I began to start creating these underground caverns and tunnels that would sprawl and reach throughout my build throughout the town of Dale. Now I used darker stone brick here to line the walls and I started to dig through because I counted down until I was at the same ground level as the lower section in the rich district but I started to get worried because I kept on digging and I wasn't seeing daylight. I mean had I, had I planned wrong? Was I digging into just nothing? Was I ever gonna oh and then I saw daylight and realized I had actually counted correctly and I'd done my maths correctly. 
So I repeated the pattern of lightstone brick that we had at the entrance to the underground tunnels at the trade district, filled in the walls with dark stone brick, put a few torches in, and put in the cobblestone step floor. And there you go, a tunnel that reaches between the two zones. Now that's just a sample, that's just a taster of how we're going to do those tunnels. There are going to be tunnels like that though that sprawl all throughout Dale, and there's going to be a whole underground market and an underground economy, with shops and all kinds of buildings completely underground. Now again, I came over to the other half of the town. I wanted to get as many of the foundations done this episode as I possibly could. So I repeated the designs that we had at the rich district and the government district with jagged stone steps here and cobblestone half blocks as the road. And I know I kind of set down paths and things in white wool, but when you make plans like that, they're only very loose. And I realized that I wanted a bit more focus on the heights. And I also realized that kind of having snaky roads is trickier to do, especially in a built up city and town. So I came over here to the rest of the residential zone and bordered this with lightstone brick. Again, just mapping down the road sections for all the residential and housing areas around here. Keeping them three thick and using the cobblestone half steps as the road. Then I came down to the bottom, looked at the road that would border the kind of edge of the river there, where the river kind of juts off and creates a little pool. And then digging away at the dirt and the stone to put in a sandstone wall behind it. And again, repeat that pattern that you've seen in the other areas of Dale. Now this area is slightly raised. So I had to fill this in and I decided that to show you guys better how we're going to build and where we're going to build, I would use gravel on the inside areas within the roads so that you could see better where we're going to build and where we're going to put the buildings down. But again, I kind of linked up the foundations for the road section, added sandstone at the bits where the walls bordered the hills, put in cobblestone half blocks again you see here replacing dirt and grass and then using the gravel to show you better how we're going to build our city, the town of Dale. Then again once the kind of the cheaper area of the residential zone was done I came up to the kind of the middle area. Now we split up our residential zone into almost three tiers. You have the super rich which is closest to Erebor, the top right, the uh, I guess northeast area of Dale, if Erebor is the north. And then at the bottom is the cheapest area, but I don't want to say slums because there aren't really any cheap houses in Dale. But I realized that I don't really have enough curves. I mean, we've got jagged lines, we've got straight lines, but we haven't got any circles or curves in Dale. So I built this kind of comet shape reaching out of the middle tier residential. And that's where we're going to put some build. We're going to put some buildings on top of that kind of comet. But for the time being, it was time to come over and finish up the jagged walls here with a pattern that we've used on the government district and the rich residential district already. And there you can see sandstone, sandstone steps, and lightstone brick. Then finishing up the comet shape here. This is going to be a large kind of circular building on top of here. Finishing up the road in between these lightstone bricks. And again, using gravel to show you guys areas where we're going to build. I then had to raise the comet shape slightly so that it was on the same level as the road on the residential district and then filled in the gap between the large circle that we mapped out there and the roads, that kind of triangle cone shape with cobblestone half blocks and then bordering that circle all the way down to the gravel with lightstone brick. And then tidying up the gravel and there we go, oh it's getting so close to being done. So I came over to this section here in the residential district and using fences and glowstone and all kinds of wood, 
I tried to decide a pattern or a blueprint for the kind of lamps that we put around Dale, something to light up the town. But in the end, I settled for this simple wooden fence glowstone, glowstone block lamp post. Then copy and pasted that and threw it around in various locations of Dale. And this will help us better light up Dale at night. Now, I've only put in half of the lamps because I copy and pasted a lamp post that only worked on one axis, on like, kind of like, like a Y axis. But if I want to put them on the roads going in a different direction, on say the X axis, I'll have to make some more lamp posts. And there you go, that's how much we've done of Dale so far. And now I'm quite impressed with how much we actually got done this episode. We've almost got all the foundations complete. And you know what that means? Once the foundations are built, we can finally start to create and build the actual buildings of Dale. You see here the underground tunnel, the rich district here with the raised platforms, looping down to the, the poorer residential districts as you get further and further down, and that comet shape there leaning out where we're going to put a nice circular building. So I've been Stjin, and this has been Let's Build Erebor. Stay tuned because next time we should hopefully get to build our first building. So hit like and favorite and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.